Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. In a previous video, we did the math, cracked the code, and formulated a lineup of six characters that would be in the game's second Fighters Pass. But they're not the only cast of characters that perfectly match those findings. There's a whole world of characters out there who still have a chance. So what's the harm in doing it all again? And maybe, no, no, definitely your favourite has made the lineup this time. Unless it's Waluigi. Impossible! Sorry. Well, that's where I, the backseat developer, come in. Again. So let's revisit our findings, augment them with some new discoveries to make it an even better representation of Smash, and use this new and improved data to create another potential lineup for the second Fighters Pass. One that has even more of a mathematical stamp of approval than the first. But before we do that, let's have a lightning fast recap of how the math worked in the first video. So how did we very successfully boil down the entire cast of Smash Brothers into a genetic soup from which we could spring six abominations of our own? First, we split the Smash roster into three groups, looked at several things that Smash characters represent, and combined the averages together to create an idea of how those things are represented in Smash as a whole. Then, using that data, we built a lineup of six new fighters that are mathematically the perfect fit for Smash Ultimate. We ignored all fan-made rules that people follow to determine if a character can join. Spirits are welcome. Yes, Me costumes are welcome. I'm going ultimate! Assist trophies? You're welcome too. <laughs> we just followed wherever the math took us. And it was beautiful. Utopian, really. But let me get real with you. This grid was never really intended to make a good Fighters Pass. Just one that follows the math as closely as possible. If you want to fit your ideal lineup into our system, well, it's probably not really going to work. But why? Well, there are a few trouble spots. With only one Western rep available in our results, picking more than one becomes impossible. So your dream team of Jack and Daxter, Doom Guy, and Croc is going straight in the trash. But even if you do only have one Western character, it still might not qualify because... In our results, the math just wasn't there for 2000's reps to get a spot of their own, meaning the whole PlayStation 2 era is scrubbed from the board. No Minecraft Steve, no Dante, no Master Chief, and yes, no Waluigi. That is, unless a character can be smuggled in by representing the 80s in some way as well. For this spot, our math wouldn't allow just any female character to join. For a female to get on the fighter's pass, they need to represent the neithers in some way too. Lara Croft? Just female, not good enough. Of course, with a little creativity, you can find a character for this spot, but it may require you to leave your dream female pick behind. Many genres just didn't have the math to be represented all on their own, which sinks hope for characters purely associated with these genres. There's absolutely no denying that Professor Layton is a puzzle game character, and with puzzle games only having 1% representation in Smash, and 16% needed to guarantee a spot on Fighters Pass 2, he's just never going to make the cut using our system. Yeah, things are pretty dire. You are so lucky to have me to shepherd you all through this. I'll tell you what, why don't you hit that big old subscribe button as a reward for me never making mistakes. Okay, this is, this is a crazy coincidence. You are not going to believe this. My beautiful child, my sweet grid of indeterminate gender, I love you very much, but you are wrong and worthless and dead to me now. While the math wasn't necessarily wrong, the data fed into it was a bit. These are the culprits. Let's look at the Echo Fighters problem first. When breaking down what Smash characters represent, we also included if a character was fully original, or an Echo Fighter as judged by Nintendo's own standards. But does that question even have a place on the Fighters Pass? We're leaving the opportunity open to add in more fighters as paid DLC, and we're not talking about Echo Fighters. Oh, 
bollocks. Fan-made rules can be ignored, as I said previously, but it's pretty hard to shrug off a comment like this, so let's just go ahead and um, lop off this side of the grid real quick before predicting our next lineup. In all honesty though, the Echo Fighters didn't really affect much, but the next thing may affect slightly more. Joker was counted as a new publisher rep, coming from Atlas, a publisher not seen before in Smash. But wait, who is this under the mask? So we've got to fix that, and flipping Joker's rep from a new publisher to a returning publisher adjusts the final average to 80% returning and 20% new. Which means we have to scrub off one of those new publishers from the list and instead have five returning publishers and one single lonely new publisher. Well, I'll be honest with you, that's a real downer. So let's cheer ourselves up a bit. To allow my ego to recover a little bit, let's reiterate some things from the first video that hold true, but might need a little clarification. In a brand new section that will not be returning for future videos called Are you a boy or a girl? Or neither or both? Who's our first contestant? It's Piranha Plant. Piranha Plant, a lot of people seem to think that you're a lady. Why is that? Well, this question actually taught me two things. Firstly, do not put Piranha Plant female into a Google image search. And secondly, there have been a weird amount of times that people have made quickly debunkable claims that Piranha Plant is a female. Yes, an official newsletter from Nintendo Germany referred to Piranha Plant using feminine words, but that turned out to just be a translation quirk stemming from the German word for plant being gendered female. Problem solved. But what's this? There's another instance of Piranha Plant being called a female, and it's coming from within the game itself? Right here in Palutena's Guidance. Is that a Piranha Plant? Not so loud, she'll hear you. Well, that settles it, Piranha Plant Waifu confirmed. But just for the sake of argument, let's play that same clip with a little more context. Not so loud, she'll hear you. Oh no. Yes, it turns out Palutena is actually referring to Viridi, and not our favourite, Toothy Plant. Piranha Plant Waifu, deconfirmed. I'm sorry lads. This Palutena's guidance also disproves another instance of Piranha Plant being a female, as the Mum Piranha, featured in Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, are referenced as a whole separate species to our favourite foliage. Which is backed up by, well, how that thing looks. So our trusty fighter remains genderless another day. Well, who's up next? Gino? Now, I can't imagine why I'd be seeing you here since you're not in Smash. I mean, not yet anyway. But some people seem to think that you're genderless, not male. Look, it makes total sense. You're a star being possessing a wooden puppet. No part of you is gendered apart from subjective appearances. Well, apart from all the parts of you that are gendered, to determine gender, we usually looked at the pronouns used to describe the characters. And in the instruction booklet for Super Mario RPG, he's referred to as a he. Same goes for the Nintendo Power Player's Guide, and even Sakurai himself refers to Gino as a male. So, with the powers of Sakurai, the instruction manual, and Nintendo Power combined, I'm pretty confident that Gino is a little baby boy. Well, that's everything cleared up, and we can get back to the good part. And I'm as confident there'll be no more corrections as I am that Charmander is my favourite Pokemon. Oh, one second, I seem to be getting some notifications. Oh, God. Well, we made it through the highs, we made it through the lows, it's time for some backseat game development. When we built our roster last time, we played it a little recklessly and used up a lot of our good categories on just a few fighters. So this time we're going to play it a little smarter. The first fighter on our list is actually a pair of fighters from an RPG in the tens, and an already represented publisher and series. I think we all know where this is going. Yes, it's our favourite northern lad Rex, and also Pyra of How Old Is Pyra Google Autocomplete fame. I definitely see these two more like the Ice Climbers fighting alongside each other rather than just being an alternate costume. A lovely pair of very big fan favourites, and we didn't even need to use a single new series or new publisher. 
For the next fighter, let's continue this trend of playing it smart, all while getting our 80s and 2000s character out the way. But to do so, we'll need to combine some of our leftover genres, and also get a thesaurus. Okay, so strategy has some good numbers. I suppose strategy could be tactical in some way, yeah. And we could definitely use some of stealth games numbers, I guess that's kind of spy-like, and you could call that espionage. And action could be... well, action. Well, that definitely has the numbers, but what kind of a series would possibly have a crazy genre like this? After first appearing in 1987's Metal Gear as the surprise antagonist, spoilers for Metal Gear on the MSX, Big Boss returned in 2004's Metal Gear Solid 3 as the protagonist and sporting a massive redesign. And of course we'd be representing his original look and his Snake Eater look in the game. Now you may say, Big Boss would never be added. Why would Sakurai add a new character to the game when their literal clone is already in the game? And to that I say, look, we're playing a numbers game here. There's still so much potential in what we have left. And I promise you, if this was a disappointment, it will be the very last one of the Fighter's Pass. Or maybe the second to last. But our third fighter certainly won't be that. We've been very good boys and girls, and boths and neithers, and saved our western slot for a while now, so let's finally break the glass on this one and make something special. A platforming icon from the 90s, from a new publisher, and a new series. And it's a male, with a female alt. He's finally here, lads. Yep, Crash Bandicoot and Coco Bandicoot are spinning their way into Smash Brothers. Coco is Crash's younger sister and a playable character in Crash Bandicoot 3, and probably some of the other ones, but they don't really exist. S stop looking at them. Stop it! I know you're probably all quite excited about the list so far, but calm your wampa fruits because we're going to scrape together a few leftovers now and build someone using some more generic parts. A pair of male characters from the 80s, from a returning publisher, but a new series. They hail from a shooter that started in the arcades. But what iconic 80s series hasn't had a fighter in Smash yet? Of course! It's Bill Riser and Lance Bean from Contra. While it may seem unlikely that Smash would include a character with so much... gun, the weapons in Contra more closely resemble some kind of tomato launcher than any real-world weaponry. So, if Joker and Bayo can make it in, then these produce-propelling lads will certainly be welcome to the party. On to fighter number five now, and... oh god. I forgot about female and neither. Hang on. How about using RPG, the Tens, and a returning publisher with the final new series? Oh yeah, that's the ticket. Wait a second, isn't 2B just a lady? What's so neither about her? Well, despite what the body pillows may make you think, your her number 2 type B is an android through and through, with her gender listed on the wiki as female model. Yes. It's another win for math. Well that's it, the fighter's pass is nearly over, and we've only got one spot left to fill. So what can we rustle up from what we've got left over? A 90s platforming character, from the east, and from a returning publisher, and series. I think I'm not alone in saying that a particular series represented in Smash has been missing something for a while. An antagonist. It's the Man of Eggs himself, and he's taken a break from his bean machine to be mean to Kareen. With this devilish round lad joining the team, we've now got another mathematically perfect lineup for the second Fighter's Pass. But even more perfect this time. I think it goes without saying that all the characters in this video aren't the only possible permutations of characters that could have been included. Characters like Rayman, Ryu from Ninja Gaiden, and Fi are all totally endorsed by the math, so why not make a list of your own using this grid or even the previous version? I really don't mind as long as you don't cheat and just say any old nonsense. But most importantly, just have some fun with it. And who knows, maybe you could be the only correct person on the internet. Something that I now have twice the chance of being. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching this episode of Backseat Game Development. If you enjoyed this video, then hit subscribe and stick around. And if you thought this wasn't funny, then why not follow me on Twitter at Backseat Game Dev for some genuinely unfunny stuff. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.